we're going to, we are recording now. Good afternoon, folks. I expect that there'll probably be some more people dinging in and that's okay. Um, last week we did Unshul, the first part of Unshul, A through N. Uh, this week we're going to go ahead and start off with the letter O. I wanted to talk real quick though about some things that I saw and I wanted to deal with those actually before I get to the letters. Um, one of the things that people were having. Um, Ian, we're not seeing your your table or your calligraphy. We're, there you go. Okay. All right. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Fun. Yeah, I was readjusting things. Sorry about that. Um, and so I wanted to cover some of the things that people might have been having issues with or had expressly said that they were having issues with. Um, so let's first things first, see if I can get a good focus. Um, one of the ones is everybody seemed to be having a little bit of issue with like half a nib width measurements and things like that when doing their D senders and their A senders. So let me dip my pen and I will show you what I mean by that. Also closing my door. My daughter is being eight and wonderful and noisy, which is great for her, but not so good for us. All right. I am using a C0 nib. By the way, if anybody ever thinks that, you know, those of us who are experienced are perfect, is five millimeters. Okay, it's a speedball C0. I knew that, which is why I made my lines on this side of the page 15 millimeters instead of 20, because four times five is 15. Yes, yeah, so I had to flip it over and redo it. Um, we all make our fun mistakes and you just got to learn to deal with them. So my, my, my recommendation is get most of your mistakes out of the way now so that you know how to deal with them later. All right. So again, you want to hold this as, a, as much of a 90 degree angle perpendicular to the paper that you can. And then the angle of the pen is about 30. Um, I'm working with the camera right in front of me. So my pen, my, my pen is not going to be sticking perpendicular up but I still am gonna be working at a pen angle here of about 30 degrees. And we start up here and we pull straight down. You notice that I'm not getting all my ink on there. So I'm gonna redo it real quick. There we go, much better. Now I am two nib widths down and I've stopped simply to show you where you need to be roughly. Once you get about there, you go ahead and just slide it half a nib width. Now half a nib width looks just like about that. Okay, but that's not the stroke, right? We need it to come to a nice curve and a point. Well, I wanted you to see that half a nib width first. Now you can see how one half of my nib is inside the stroke and one half of my nib is outside that stroke. Now I do almost the same thing. And if I don't lift my nib correctly, if I keep pulling it down as I pull it off, it's going to look like that. And a lot of people were doing, were having that issue. There we go. So if I lift it in the direction that my pen is traveling, then I get that nice point. See if I can make it better this time. There we go. Lifted it a little too soon, but I can go back to it and do that. So that's that half a nib width. If you happen to have done um, any of the gothics, the rigid gothics, where you make diamonds, half a nib width, and then a diamond, right? Come on, diamond. It's that same idea, except you're doing it in reverse from the top. All right, any questions about that at this point? 
So this stroke is the same stroke for the F, the N, the P, the Q, the R. It's the exact same stroke every single time. So it's a very, so it's a useful stroke to get better at. Although my ink is doing some interesting things, making it look funny. All right. So the other thing that I saw is that people are having a harder time giving it nice, big, wide, or we're making it too wide. And that's pretty normal. So we're going to go ahead and do the first letter O and show that openness. 30 degree angle, nice and wide. Bring it out for that first half of the stroke. If you end up losing a little bit of ink like that, when it comes to form practice, don't worry too much about it. And trying to go over it a second time is not necessarily an easy thing to do. And then bring it over and try and land inside it. This here should be almost flat and at about a 30 degree angle. Up here should be almost flat and at a 30 degree angle. But for some reason, even with those flats, our eye registers this as round. And that's because this inner space is rounded, kind of oval, but it's rounded. So we don't mind the flat because we have that white space that is nice and rounded. And this one that's a little bit more pronounced. I actually didn't get myself enough space when I started the stroke, which is why you're starting to see some overlap. And so that round space inside is why we see it as a round thing. Um, Typical things that I was seeing was people trying to shortcut, make it a, a smaller letter than it actually is. That's an O. It's recognizable as an O. It's a pretty O. It's not an uncial O. We have one, two and a half, one, two and a half, one, two and a half. I'm being consistent. I'll be honest, I have not measured recently what the O is supposed to be, um, and I can do that, but um, the idea is, even if you're making mistakes, consistency, consistency covers a lot of mistakes. Um, so that's O. We did P a little bit last time, but really it was just to show you the difference on P's. So let me show you actually the P correctly. All right, it's that J stroke, it's that long descender stroke. That's your spine, the backbone of the letter P. Pull it straight down, half an inward. The P starts below the waistline. You pull it up and around. And then see how it's just nice and flat? Just keep doing nice and flat till you hit the baseline. There's your P. Pull it straight down, half a nib width, just below, bring it up and around. Is that, and so I, I just got done telling you consistency is great. And well, that doesn't look quite the same, does it? I pulled out a little too much and I flattened it here. 
And this is a common issue. It's something that everybody will do sooner or later. Um, usually this is happens because we're trying to, we think we've gone out too far. We're trying to create a shortcut so that the letter doesn't get too big. When we do that, we flatten it. Too far out, that's okay. Just curve, curve it to bring it in. Don't go flat. Ian Taliesin wanted to share that uh, Jogan has more of a, has more of a curve to the upright spine in the P. I guess that's the question. So there, let me take it. Let's take a look at it. There is. If you watch this, you go here and it's pretty much straight down until you get to the baseline. And he is extending this down more than two nib widths. That's actually probably the same X, same as the X height. But when we're here, I see straight and then I see this nice gentle curve. Um, and that differentiate, that's different than this one because I'm stopping at two nib widths. I probably could stop down here and be just fine for what Drogan is doing. And it's good to point out that there's a difference between what I am doing and what Drogan is doing, because we're supposed to be working off of Drogan, not off of Ian. Ooh, got stuck something on there. So huh. yeah, I really hate this pen, but the ones I ordered haven't come in yet. And I drew it too straight here. I should have been coming over sooner, according to Drogan. Lack of ink control right there. Ian, I have to step away for just a few minutes. I'll keep recording. I just want to let you know that I'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Is that a little bit better, Taliesin? Yeah, it's just that. I know that we've given the Drogan um, um, ductus as the sample, for, which is why I made the, the comment. Yep. No, and that's an excellent observation and the right, absolute right thing to do. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So the R. Oh, we go to Q. Sorry. The next letter after P is Q. Go figure. This Q looks essentially like a C with the J pulled down. And then we do a straight line very slightly and then pull straight down and do that. This cue does not go to the right. It goes, it does not go to the end of the line. It goes to the front of the line. So, and I just reflexively did something because that's how I like to make this line. Um, I literally lifted the top right corner of my pen and just dragged the corner. And for those who want to learn how to do that, let me switch over to my other camera here and kind of show it to you. Here we go. So, you're pulling straight down with your line and to lift that corner, we're not going to twist our fingers, although we could, we're going to lift our elbow and that actually lifts that corner up. And so when you see it on the page, it's hard to see, 
Let me see if I can get it for you. So I do the C, pull that straight over, pull it straight down. And right here, I start to lift my elbow and that lifts that there. And the stroke doesn't work so well if you stop in the middle of it as you saw. It's not as pretty as these other two. It's hard to do slow for me. But it's something that if you want to try, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But for Drogan, make that nice wide bowl. Come back in, come straight down, come straight over, and then pull down and get that line. Right. Do we have any questions about this so far? So, all right, we'll switch over to R. R was another letter that some people were trying before we, were, we, we really showed it. Yes, I showed it a little bit last week. Um, and the classic thing that I saw for the foot was to pull it down and make this beautiful shape. I love that shape, but that's not how we do it for Unchul. So start off with the R, with the spine. Now the R does close, unlike the P, the R closes. And then, well, we get this little stump. At most, that's all we, that's, that's what we do. I mean, we can play with it a little bit if we're at the end of a thing or trying to fill in some space, but that's the R. It's not particularly a sexy letter in this script. a little bit below, curve to the right, close it, a little stumpy. That is visually different than that. I prefer that, but that's not the Unchul R. Right, yeah. Um, so it is, it's about, it is about three nib widths. It should be this, not this. Um, I shortened it because I was trying to get to that. So uh, I don't know if you can, yeah, you should be able to see it a little bit. That's my next line. That's four nib widths from my, my baseline. Now, one of the things that we're going to talk about in, in the next two to three weeks, because we're going to have the whole we're going to have the whole alphabet done after today. So, what's left to learn? Well, how to put letters next to other letters, how to put words next to other words, how to put sentences together. I, not not that you don't know how to write a sentence grammatically, but drawing a sentence is different in calligraphy than doing it with handwriting. Um, we're going to talk about layout. We're going to talk about how you adjust letters and things like that. Um, and so you'll notice this is one kind of two. This is one definitely two. This is not going to be two. It should be about one and a half. One, yeah, there it is, about a half. Sometimes when you're writing in the middle of a word or you're near the end of a line, you need to squish it a little. Okay, fine, but first do it right. Learn how to do it the right way. Looks like Drogan has two niblets. Yeah, about two niblets there.
down to two, three Nebwitz, get that point. Curve to the right. Close it. Inside that, come down to the baseline. And that's a little too much. Now, his R also extends out. And that R, that extending out, does not work if you're right next to another ladder. However, Ian, you're writing off the screen. Thank, thank you. you. However, if you've got the room, go ahead and extend it out and have a little bit more fun with it. This is still visually different than that. So which way do I recommend you practice it? Both, to be honest, but pick one, do that. Then the next time you do the R, either, you know, if the first one's long, then do three long. The next time, do three short. And that way you get practice doing both. So S, there's... Uh, to let you know, there is a tall S and a short S in most polygraphy scripts. In Unchill, there is only the short S. What's a short S? It's the S you're used to seeing. Um, it's done in three parts. The middle, then you can do top, or top, then bottom, or bottom, then top. Drogan says, you know, do bottom, then do top. Um, I, I've never understood why I want to put ink in front of, in, in a place where my hand will want to go first. So I, I do top, then bottom. In the end, I really don't care how you do it, in what order, I care that it ends up looking the way it's supposed to. If you can figure out a way to do this upside down, swinging on a trapeze, all the more power to you. So I call this a little bit of a snake, just as a, to get a visual on it. And it's the part that makes the S look like the S. Now here's the interesting thing about Drogon's S. It is not equal. The bottom is bigger than the top. And that is um, usually not very pleasing to the modern eye. All right, so if I start up here at the top, I fill it in, I come up here to where it's at, and I'm just gonna do what you would do for a C. Just pull it down. Done at least for that part. Over here, it's kind of the same stroke. I actually started above the line. Not that you can see it no matter how I tilt the paper. So instead of starting here and pushing up, I start up here and pull down. And I'll mess that up a little bit. The top is more open than the bottom. And that's a common mistake. No, I did not make that one on purpose. Now, that's roughly correct. The top is small, the bottom is big. I think this is probably a little too closed. And the reason for that is, is that this isn't extending level enough that way for Drogon. What I'm doing is fighting by the fact that I know several other scripts and I'm, draw and I, and I'm writing it for a different, I, I'm starting it for a different script. And this is one of the fun things that when you start knowing more scripts, you're gonna be like, which one am I doing? And make sure that you practice it correctly. There we go. Much better. And you can see how that completely changes the way it looks. And if we put the S for Drogon in there right next to it, the last one looks a lot better than the first one. 
and the middle one, uh, it was wrong. And that's why we always go back to our ductus. All right, any questions on S? I don't see anything in chat. All right, we'll move on. And Ian, I'm back. Thank you very much. So T is a horizontal stroke and a perpendicular stroke. And you'd think that'd be easy, but it's actually one of the easier letters to get wrong. He does have a curve at the bottom. So 30 degree angle, just like your warm ups. And this can be long, short, whatever you need it to be to fit the space that you're in. He's putting more of his, the stroke on this side, instead of going straight in the middle, it's, it's more heavily weighted this way and with less of the stroke that way. So if I put it in the middle, I'd start here, but I'm not doing the middle. So I'm gonna go half a nib with this way and pull straight down. That's how I do them is with that, but no, Drogan really is showing a little bit of a curve there. I could probably get away with a longer stroke for the crossbar. And the key with this for Unchel is that it's just straight across. We, we don't get to do any of the fun up and down wavy things yet. I need to do that in the next script a little bit and then definitely in Carolyn. Ian, you're writing off the screen again. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have my normal setup today. So I appreciate being told when I'm doing that. So you'll notice that this pen angle is more 45 and that's easier. Don't keep it at 30. I'm gonna take it, flip it around. Start with a nice clean one. All right, you. I thought you would be a problem for people uh, that hadn't been shown this yet. The people that were skipping ahead and writing use, most of them were gorgeous. It was really neat. Thirty degree angle, a little bit of a lead in, and then essentially it's just a curve to the left. It's really hard to figure out where you're supposed to stop. Well, the nice thing is, is that the next stroke, which is essentially an I, um, can cover up a lot of mistakes. If you stop too short, that's okay, as long as you can cover it. Go a little long, as long as it doesn't go too far, you can cover it. Um, with Drogan, you have about a nib width and a half between here and then the next stroke. So one, and then another little half. Do a nice little lead in, pull straight down. And he does a little bit of a curve. So without measuring that and showing the measurements, curve to the left, about a nib width and a half. 
make an eye. That's not a nib width and a half. That's a nib width and a quarter at most. And if you need to sit there and do this to figure it out, that's okay. It helps you get that visual acuity that you need. And you can see how that's definitely wider than that. And it's only about a quarter of an nib-width difference. Now, the V doesn't really exist and people were trying to draw a V. My version of the V, and, and, and Drogan doesn't do this, is start with the U. Instead of drawing an I, kind of mess up making a circle. Just start here and make that curve to the right and land inside it. And that's how I would do a V for this. He does show a W and people are like, well, they didn't do Ws. And actually they did. And we have um, like the Manny's nothing. Um, there's a Bible that was written using Unchul um, for about three in the fourth century. Uh, and you see Ws there all the time. And it really is just a U with what would be the stroke for the V. Now, that second stroke that I made for the W is a lot like that B stroke, right? Come down and curved. And now I just do the curve to the right. And I have a beautiful W. If I hide that, it looks just like a V. So W starts with that start, curve to the left, stroke for the B, and then a curve to the right. And just like the M, you want to have pretty even spacing here. X. There's a lot of ways to draw X, but the Uncho X um, is done in theory in two strokes. And it starts off with the same stroke that you might use to draw the spine of the A. And then Drogan starts it as a slight descender underneath, and it is over here, if I draw this line straight down, it's over here. And then we do a diagonal. And then we stop about there. It's kind of a fun X. If you have more room, Instead of drawing it like that, it's okay to make that a little bit extended out, 45 instead of a 60. This is what happens when you end up pushing. Try not to push. Try and keep that line straight on the uh, edge of the pen. I wonder why it's doing that this week. Right. Any questions on the X? All right. We did so have a comment. We did have a comment in. Oh, on the W. 
Yeah, so did you see it? So in a lot of ways, the W is the same as the M, just upside down. The center stroke is mostly vertical rather than another curve. I guess that's the question from Pierre. Um, Pierre, that is pretty accurate. Um, and these, and these really show that off. Um, I mean, if I stick an Grogan's M right next to that, those letters look really similar, but upside down from one another. So good observation. And I suppose if you're left-handed and trying to do the right upside down thing, this might be a way to do it. My left-handed instructors can laugh at me and, and, and correct me if, I, if that doesn't work. All right, so why? Why is the most misunderstood letter on how to draw it that I, that I, in my experience? So it is essentially a curve to the right that we don't really curve all that much. It's just a slight curve to the right. And when that bottom corner of the pen touches the baseline, stop. And then about halfway, maybe two thirds of the way up, come up and draw that. And we're done with the letter Y. No, we're not. We have to dot the Y. We don't dot the I, we dot the Y. Oop. If we can get the ink to flow. There we go. Some reason that looks oh well, that's why it looks off balance. I didn't extend the second stroke of the Y far enough. There we go. That's much better. And again, these are just shortcuts and things that you can make depending on what's right next to it, but you know, practice what's there and dot the Y. The Y can be extremely simple, but it doesn't, it, it messes with how our brain sees things. Right. Any questions on the why? No questions in chat. All right, so Z. Z is all done in one stroke. We don't lift the pen. It's the only letter in Unshul, other than perhaps the I and J, that are done in one stroke. Um, and, and you notice it's not a straight across. There's a little bit of a bend. It bows a little. So that's, this is the closest thing that, that uh, Unchel has to a swoopy letter. And my ang my pen angle was wrong. I didn't. I wasn't marching, matching it up. So, thirty degree pen angle. There's some kind of detriment on my pen there. And don't do what I just did. Ah. It's supposed to look like that, not like this. Um, my, one of my absolute favorite scripts uh, is a script called Batard, and uh, specifically a, a French Batard from Tours is one of my favorite scripts. And every once in a while, I 
do a stroke as if I'm writing that instead of what I'm supposed to be doing. A little bit better. And that's A through Z. So we have about 15, 20 minutes left uh, where people can ask questions, um, get more specifics. How do I deal with kind of questions? Um, love to field those. Uh, pretty much everything is fair game. Comments, observations, questions? Okay, so this is Richard to everybody. Since this is a much shorter recording than previously, you can go ahead and uh, share video if you want and turn your mics back on and ask your questions directly to Ian. You do not have to do them in chat. Are you able to show us some numbers? So numbers at this point in time are all Roman. OK. And Which so I'm they are I, I, V, X, C, and L, M. Uh -huh. And so they literally are just the letters that you have in your alphabet. Now, you know, can I, get, can I show you a, an Unshul-esque way to draw the Arabic numbers that we use, one, two, three, not I, you know, and V and I, V and all that stuff. Um, not really. Um, I can play with it a little. Like maybe one would be a T upside down. Um, if we are doing scrolls and things like that, and, and or we're trying to keep things period S, you know, we're just going to want to draw the ones and the IVs and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, how would the two be done? Well, we have a curve to the right. And then we're going to do that A here. And we're going to pull across. This was completely unknown to the people who wrote Unchul. Um, that said, interesting thing about Roman numerals is that four tended to be written most of the time like this. It very rarely was written like this at this point in Europe. Mm. Unless you happen to be in Rome. Ian, we have a question from Annette. Sure. And the question is, how slowly should you make letters? Slow enough to get them correct. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, like um, that I realize that that is not, you know, a very useful answer in a uh, like tangible way. But let me show you the difference. I realize I've been writing this script 15, 16 years now. Here's my quick C. Ian, uh huh. Um, the trick they say is that if it doesn't feel slow, then you're not going slow enough. Yep. This is my C feeling slow. I'm focusing on what I'm doing. I'm watching my curves. Mm -hmm. I'm watching my endpoints. The one on the right where I went slow looks better. Mm -hmm. um, there is a term that is starting to be commonly known. It's called mindfulness. And essentially what it is, is observing and thinking about what you are doing and seeing the entire time. And so calligraphy is really, really good for that kind of, of writing and that mindful way of doing things. Um, if you're not familiar with mindfulness, don't worry about it. But calligraphy 
as a formal way of writing has never been about getting it done quickly. It's been about getting it done pretty. There are other kinds of writing that are done uh, usually in the same time periods as, as the formal scripts are that are much quicker um, and do not, and are not as pretty for lack of a better way of saying. Part of, part of the challenge too, Ian, I think is, is that we still continue to say um, in terms of doing calligraphy, we still use the term writing calligraphy when real, in reality, we should not use the word writing. We should be using the word drawing. That is very true. Um, the more and more I do have done calligraphy, the more and more I have started referring to it as drawing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, calligraphy is the art of drawing language. Does that answer the question, Annette? So, and that's the thing, right? We're, we're at the point where we've seen the entire ductus. We've seen different ways of writing things a little bit. Yes, thanks. All right. Glad to hear that. You're welcome, Annette. Um, now we're going to start talking about the essence of calligraphy, the, the thinking of calligraphy, and then some of the more mechanics of calligraphy with the layout and lines and things like that. Um, but until is, you know, you have to have your, you have to have an, an alphabet that you're doing before you can really start having those other conversations. So one of the things that I'd like people to start working on, and we're only two weeks in, so don't push yourself too much. Yes, follow that ductus. Look at the ductus and do what you're doing. But if you need to look at it for every stroke, go right ahead and do it. But every once in a while, I want to see if you can, I want you to try and see if you can do that next stroke without looking and then compare it to the ductus and see how well you did. Because eventually you need to be able to write this without having the ductus around at all. If you're not there yet. I don't expect anybody to be there yet. But we can start practicing to get there. It took me took me six weeks, I think, uh, for my first ductus to be memorized. And after that, I could get it in about two weeks because, well, your brain already knows how to write the strokes, and so now you just have to learn how to stick them together. Um, but yeah, now we're going to start talking about the philosophy and all the other, you know, cultural learning processes. Uh, uh, that go along with this. Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns, conundrums? Nothing is currently listed in chat. Um, I do. Go right ahead. My Ys all look weird and lopsided. I think because I'm sort of going up and then curving down, but tilting too far to the left. Is there okay. a good way to gauge how far away the bottom of the first stroke of the Y is from the top? So you remember how on P, we say start a little bit below and then curve. That is essentially the same thing as the Y. Let me start. Let me start that Y for you over here, right next to this P. And here I start it up. And essentially, what this is is the corner of my pen is about a nib width and a half, a nib width away from the top of that line. So I start to make that P stroke, but instead of coming in, I just kind of flatten it out and I end up there. And then I come up about two thirds and I kind of make the same stroke again, but I stop there. And then I dot it. Does that help? I just tried that and I think it looks better. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. And if any of the other instructors have comments, feel free to pipe in. I am not an, I am not the only person here who knows how to do this. If you were to draw lines from the 
top left corner of the Y to in the first stroke to the um, inside corner, uh, just uh, do an upright in. Um, an upright? Both, yeah, if you do an upright from both of those, those two corners, like when you do the ladder, just, just ghost in a line. I'm not sure I'm understanding what you want me to do yet. Okay, so go back to the, the first stroke of the Y that you had. So from the top left corner of the Y, ghost a straight, no, no, where you started at the point, All right. ghost, ghost a straight line down. You got Just, it. Not too so straight. Can, yeah. There we go. It, it should be roughly between the bottom of that ghosted line to the bottom of your stroke should be roughly two pen angles. If you look at the Grogan um, ductus, it's actually done on graph paper so that you can actually see um, the pen widths. And Grogan is saying that um, four pen widths is roughly four, uh, three um, um, squares. Yeah. Uh, and so um, if you look, um, he's only two, uh, two squares wide between that bottom. And once you can get that visually, it will make it easier um, to do. And if you're having an issue um, where to finish your strokes, remember that in calligraphy, we don't look where the nib is going. We look where we want the nib to finish. And our eye will not, our hand, eye hand coordination will connect those two dots. So, and you'll notice that on the handout that I've given, um, I've driven in base, I wrote, I wrote in baselines and waistlines and other ways of doing things on here. These are my very first notes on calligraphy. And I've just left them in. So now there are two forms of the Y and I only did one. You can extend it up above the waistline as a choice. And I had forgotten about that. I do know that people are having an issue with an N, but most of what I saw with the issues happened to be with this stroke. Everybody else seemed to be getting these connected pretty well, better than what Drogan's doing. So were there any questions about the N? All right, well, I think unless somebody has another question, we'll go ahead and say that's the end of the class. Could you go back to the R? I can go back to the R, absolutely. What's up with the R? Uh, so I was curious between the way you were showing us to draw the R and the way the, the ductus shows the R is the, it's not so much the, the vertical tail, it's the, the last, the, the, the R. the leg of the R. R. Yeah, because right. the, the ductus shows it sticking out like a bunch. And right. you're showing this really stubby version. Yep, and here's why. I'm gonna write a word. I'm gonna do it Drogan's way. I'm writing the word person. That's problematic, isn't it? I see. So yes, it's okay to, to practice that extension. And I need to file this thing down, but Um, 
you're going to need to adapt any script you do to your circumstances. Now, if I write person, and I'm doing too much overlap. And I shorten that leg, things will balance out pretty well. And I keep it inside that imaginary box that's there. And now I have distinct letters. Granted, I don't think that's a particularly pretty way of doing it, but it makes it work. And that's why I practice it with a short one. Because if I want to extend it, I personally find extending it easier than shortening it. But I think practicing it three long and then come back to it later and practice three short is probably a really good way to go about it. That makes sense. And I'll finish out the word because it's bugging me that it's not finished. <laughs> so yeah, excellent question. And, and that's one of the things that we'll definitely go into in later classes is how do we adapt it and modify the, the letter form in a way that is true to the script that we have without you know, altering it too much. So, there we go. Any other questions? Right. No questions in chat, everybody complimenting you on your teaching. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate it. We are uh, at about one hour at this point. So I look forward to seeing stuff. We will have the instructors up for you. Every week we uh, try and rotate the instructors. So everyone